Welcome to the world of Pokemon! This world is inhabited by creatures called Pokemon. For some people, Pokemon are pets. Others use them for... Wait a minute. This isn't the right footage. Or is it? We are now in the sixth generation of Pokemon games, and thus far, each and every journey through these wondrous landscapes has been modeled after actual locations in the real world. Not only the geography, but also the cities and other important destinations. This is Kanto, the setting of the very first generation of Pokemon. I first explored this Kanto at the age of 11, where many friends were made and adventures were had. This, however, is the Kanto region of Japan, a place I wouldn't explore until 11 years later at the age of 22. Kanto, apart from containing Tokyo and one-third of the population of Japan, contains the hometown of Pokemon series creator and current CEO of Game Freak, Satoshi Tajiri. Tajiri set the world of the very first Pokemon games in an alternate version of his home region. And I invite you now to join me as we unveil the real world of Pokemon. Alright Pikachu, let's go. We awaken in our home of Pallet Town, a small but peaceful little hamlet which connects to the ocean to the south. Pallet Town is here for a reason, and in the same position on the real world map we have Shimoda City, a former port town that is mostly known for being the port that was forcibly opened to the world by Commodore Perry, the American Commodore who sailed to Japan in 1852 and whose arrival started the modernization of the country after more than 200 years of isolationism. Perry's arrival pushed Japan into a new and unfamiliar world and it's fitting that our journey begins here, pushing us, the players, into the strange and magical world of Pokemon. When we're ready to leave, we make our way through Route 1 to our first stop, Viridian City, home of drunken old men and our one link to the top tier of the Pokemon world, the Indigo Plateau. Putting the plateau aside for now, if we look where we are in the real world, it's clear that we have now arrived in Odawara City, one of the most beautiful cities that I have ever had the pleasure to visit. Odawara contains many highlights. Apart from being locked in by the beautiful mountains to the north and west, it's also situated on the western side of Tokyo Bay. Odawara Castle is a great site to view the Hakone Mountains, which also happens to be our next destination, also known as the Viridian Forest. After beating enough battle-hardened metapods to make one sick, we finally arrive at Pewter City, home to the first gym leader we can challenge, Brock. Pewter City is based on Maibashi City, the capital of Gunma Prefecture. Maibashi sits at the base of several mountains, the most notable of which is Mount Akagi. This gorgeous mountain contains a crater lake at the top, much like its Pokemon series counterpart, Mount Moon. But the real mountain isn't as well known for housing ancient fossils or the infamous Team Rocket. Heading east from Pewter City through Mount Moon, we come to our second gym town, Cerulean City. Cerulean's connection to the water is clear from its real-world counterpart, Tsuchiura City, which also happens to be situated next to the second biggest lake in Japan, Lake Kasumigaura. Before or after beating Misty senseless, it's necessary to pass through routes 24 and 25 to get to Bill's house. Unfortunately, Bill's house does not have a real-world analog. Bill's name may be a reference to Microsoft's Bill Gates, but his original Japanese name of Masaki Sonezaki seems to just be a reference to the cape where he lives. There is a strange coincidence here though, because in the place where Bill's house would be on the eastern coast of Kanto, we have Hitachi City. That is, Hitachi as in the huge electronics conglomerate Hitachi. Could Game Freak have drawn the connection between giant multinational electronics companies and Masaki similarities to Bill Gates in America? It doesn't seem too unlikely, but that's just a theory. The next leg of our Pokemon journey requires us to pass under a certain city you just know is coming to arrive south at Vermilion City, also known as Yokohama. You may recognize the name Yokohama from the Tire Company, but in Japan it's known for having the largest harbor in the country. Unlike Vermilion City, which seems relatively small, Yokohama is no slouch of a city compared to its capital which sits to the north and contains nearly 4 million people. Vermilion is also the site of our third gym battle, and after beating Lieutenant Surge and heading back to Cerulean City, we can finally head east to the site of the Rock Tunnel which will take us to our next destination. It's interesting to note here though, that the power plant in this area which houses Zapdos, the legendary bird, does have its own real world counterpart. In this same area on our map sits Tokai Nuclear Power Plant, which was Japan's first commercial nuclear power plant. Once we've passed through the Rock Tunnel, we come out far to the south, just outside of Lavender Town. Lavender is a depressing place, and it's ironic that at the same site, we have the little Narita City, which is also home to Narita International Airport, the entry point to the country for thousands of travelers. I usually get depressed when I arrive in Lavender Town, but every time I pass through Narita, I couldn't be more excited. 
One quick note on Narita and Lavender. While players of the game will instantly think of the Pokemon Tower Graveyard when thinking of Lavender Town, there doesn't seem to be anything like this that stands out in Narita. As far as I can tell, the closest link would be the Great Peace Pagoda, if only based on aesthetics. Well, after taking care of some business in Lavender, we can finally head west, briefly passing through another underground tunnel to end up in Celadon City, home to the 4th Gym, and various commercial enterprises, such as the Celadon Department Store and Gaming Center. You may have already guessed what Celadon City is representative of, and while it's true we have finally reached Tokyo, the famous capital of Japan is so massive, it's hard to wrap your head around it. To make things simpler, don't think of Tokyo just as a single city. Instead, think of it as its own prefecture, whose different sections are like cities in their own right. By doing this, it's easy to recognize Celadon for what it is, the shopping and debauchery center of Tokyo, Shinjuku. This is evident from its abundance of places for gambling and shopping, as well as houses full of cute women in special costumes. Directly east of Celadon, we have Saffron City, which is set in the business center of Tokyo, Marunoichi. Marunoichi also houses Tokyo Station, Japan's travel hub for Shinkansen, train, and bus. Of these, the Tokaido Shinkansen can take one directly to another one of Japan's most famous cities, Osaka, which is situated in the Kansai region. To give a bit of a spoiler, Osaka is also known as Goldenrod City of Johto in the Pokemon world, but it and the rest of Johto, I'll leave for next time. While the real Marunoichi doesn't seem to contain gems full of psychics anywhere, like our fifth gym leader Sabrina, it does contain the Imperial Palace of Japan. The Emperor of Japan, by the way, much like the British monarch, is the highest authority in the native religion of Japan, Shintoism, where he and his descendants are said to be descended from Amaterasu herself. With five badges under our belt, we can leave for the next city by two routes, one to the east and one to the west. Whichever route chosen leads to Fuchsia City, in the same position as Tateyama City on the southern portion of the Boso Peninsula and on the southeastern side of Tokyo Bay. Fuchsia City is home to the Safari Zone, which could be any number of forested areas in the hills to the north. One set of gold teeth and a fight with Koga later, our business is finished in Fuchsia, and we can head south on Route 19 into the ocean, where we make a brief stop at Seafoam Island, home to the legendary bird Pokemon Articuno. Strangely, Seafoam Island is one of the few major destinations in the Pokemon version of Kanto that does not have a real-world equivalent. There's nothing but water here. But by heading west, we can reach Cinnabar Island, which is modeled after the very real Izu Oshima, the northernmost of the Izu Islands, which also have their own Pokemon world equivalent, although that too is a story for another time. Izu Oshima is home to Mount Mihara, a still active volcano whose last eruption was in 1990. Interestingly, in the Pokemon games, Cinnabar Island is forced to be evacuated after an eruption which happens after the events of Generation 1. This is probably based on the 1986 eruption of Mount Mihara, which actually did require all 12,000 inhabitants of the isle to evacuate. For now though, we can obtain our 7th gym badge by defeating Blaine, and with our business concluded, we can finally head north, arriving back at Pallet Town. As most know, we have one more stop in Vermilion City to defeat Giovanni, the leader of Team Rocket, who is now returned as the final gym leader. With all the gems under our belt, we can finally head to face the Elite Four and the Pokemon Champion in their complex at the top of the world. Before we get there, however, we have to prove ourselves via obnoxiously long block puzzles within Victory Road. As stated before, the real-world equivalent of Vermilion City, Odawara, has many mountains to the west which make fine candidates for Victory Road. But the two most prominent suspects would first of all be Mount Hakone, close by to the west, or if we imagine Route 22 to be a bit more substantial than it appears to be, Mount Ashitaka. Both of these sit in the presence of Japan's most famous landmark and highest point, Mount Fuji, which we arrive at once finished passing through Victory Road. Depending on the source, the Indigo Plateau, home of the Elite Four, appears to either sit at the base or top of this gorgeous mountain, known in games as Mount Silver. Defeating these four master trainers and our rival makes us the new Pokemon champion of Kanto, standing here at the top of the world. This is such a fitting way to end our first Pokemon journey, but we're actually just getting started. The next generation of Pokemon games takes place in the next logical setting, the geographically close but culturally different region of Kansai Japan, home to the fun-loving Osakans and Japan's cultural capital, Kyoto. That's all for now, but thanks for watching a video about two of my favorite things, Pokemon and Geography. I know it can't get much nerdier than this, but if you still manage to like it, please take a moment to share this on your favorite social media sites, or just wherever you like. Depending on the response to this video, I may continue to do these for all generations of the Pokemon games, so let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below, or just by giving me a like or subscribe. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.